video, I am going to show you what all the greatest breeding pigeons in the history of the sport have in common. You may be surprised, but every single one of them, they're all crosses. I will also show you why you should not inbreed. And if you are going to inbreed, you must follow these principles. But again, keep in mind, the greatest pigeons in the history of the sport, the greatest breeders, are all crosses. Now, looking at these pigeons, what do they have in common? Usually, it's a superstar line on one side, on a superstar line on the other. The great Belgians want you to pack as many unrelated champions in the pedigree as possible. So, if you are breeding from a son of one superstar mated to a daughter of another superstar and possibly all four grandparents are not related, your chances are increased of breeding a champion both racer and breeder. Most everyone gets caught up in 10th grade genetics. They hear inbreed, uh, line breed, and outcross. Yeah, maybe works well for peas, but I've been watching pigeons for 50 years, and there hasn't been an inbred pigeon that has changed the sport. I'm saying an inbred breeding pigeon. There has not been one that has changed the sport. For example, let's look at Blixum of Gabby Vendenabila. Blixum was a son of Colonel, an ace middle distance pigeon. Gabby bought a daughter of the Vital, of Noel Lippins, who was a second ace long distance pigeon. Puts these two pigeons together, bang, here comes Blixum. Now, another dynasty of pigeons, and if they were in the internet age, they would be a lot more popular, it would be the Invincible Monobond dynasty. Uh, Silva Toya bought the bird from Maurice Cassatt, one of the best pigeons I've ever seen in my lifetime, and it would have been so much more famous today, but it was difficult to get pigeons back, and his genes didn't pass around the world quickly. Again, Invincible Monobond was bred from the Belle de Seine. Plume Blanche, two totally unrelated birds, endless champions down from the pigeon. Den 31 of Engels, one of the greatest breeders in the last hundred years. Cross pigeon, spectacular pigeon. And many of his youngsters were bred, they bred winners, and they were crossed, and they bred winners. And you've got generations of people crossing those pigeons. Now, like I said before, you want to pack as many superstar unrelated pigeons in the pedigree as possible. Here is Harry, for example. Harry's father was a son of Blixum. Harry's mother was a daughter of Klein Dirk of Koopman. And again, Klein Dirk was a total crossed pigeon. Klein Dirk was out of a daughter of the cannibal, made it to Gentile packing in superstars in the pedigree. So, more modern pigeons. I know everybody, like, maybe not looking at history. Porsche 911, Total Cross, Leave, a Gehrings head, made it onto Wacko Freddy, who also was a Total Cross. Big line of champions. Maybe you're not familiar with some of those older pigeons. You're new into the sport. Crosses, total crosses. These great breeders are all crossed pigeons. Now, if you're going to inbreed, this is a must. You must mate a champion to a champion. Don't inbreed just for the sake of inbreeding. If you have a superstar racer and you want to mate it back to its aunt, and the aunt better be a great breeder or a great racer. Don't just mate a superstar racer to its daughter with no performance or no breeding record. You're going to lose. If you're going to inbreed, both parents have to be either performance or super breeders. So, on a recap, the greatest pigeons in the history of the sport, they're crosses. Don't worry about inbreeding. And the only time you should ever inbreed is if both parents are superstars and then you can breed from those babies but again you're more apt to breed a champion if the mother and father are superstar unrelated pigeons that's what i look for if you like my videos please subscribe share hit the like button this is frank mclaughlin mclaughlin lofts thank you